Good afternoon, I'm Karen Holmes Ward. Welcome to City Line. Later, the history of hip hop collected at UMass and a daughter's tribute to her dad's big band. But first, she was known as the queen of disco. Boston's own Donna Summer topped the music charts for years. Now a new documentary on the singer who was raised in Mission Hill is shedding new light on her life on stage and off. ABC's Lindsay Davis with Love to Love You, Donna Summer, the icon behind the music that defined a generation. In the late 70s, Donna Summer ruled the disco charts with hits like Last Dance, featured in the movie Thank God It's Friday. The smash song I Feel Love, so iconic that Summer was featured in a VH1 special singing the nightclub staple decades later. I remember when I Feel Love came on at Studio 54, you just stopped in your tracks. You thought, what is this? Her music, much of which she wrote herself, earned Summer the nickname the Queen of Disco. A lot of clubs had disco balls. Being sort of the queen of the disco made me, you know, like that synonymous sort of with me. Now a new HBO documentary, Love to Love You, Donna Summer, peels back the curtain on the late singer's rise to fame and her personal life. Co-directed by her daughter, Brooklyn Sedano, and Oscar winner Roger Ross Williams. Does everybody here have somebody to love? You talk about in the documentary that it was really a persona when she got on stage. And so when was she most herself? She was able to be the Donna Summer that everybody knew because it was a part of her. It just it wasn't everything of mm. her. And she would want people to understand that she wasn't just this cardboard cutout. She was a layered, complex artist. That's who she was. Yeah. I have a secret life. You're looking at me, but what you see is not what I am. She really felt called to this dream of hers, this, this destiny that she felt that she had from a really young age. The documentary features never-before-seen personal photos and footage, much of it shot by Summer herself and narrated by family and close friends. We've discovered audio tapes of Donna from when she was uh, doing her autobiography. We use that audio as the base to really string out these stories. There's no experts, there's no musicologists. It's the story that you would never hear um, from the outside. It's a story that only the family could tell. You have a much deeper appreciation for her as the singer that you know, but also as the artist, the songwriter, the painter, full package of who she was. <laughs> Donna Summer was raised in a devoutly Christian family. She began singing in church at eight years old, later joining a band called The Crow as a teen. All the band was white. I was the crow. While working in Germany in 1975, Summer scored her breakout hit, Love to Love You Baby but she felt uneasy about being known for the sexy anthem, as she explained to Diane Sawyer. How did you feel inside about what everybody was doing, making you the sex goddess of the world? How did you feel inside? Well, I, I felt like, you know, it would be like making Carol Burnett the sex goddess of the world. I mean, that <laughs> would be the equivalent to me being a sex goddess. So, I mean, I think but that... you did it. You did it. Well, I was an actress. Over her career, the performer won five Grammys and scored 14 top 10 hits. Including Hard for the Money, the video, the first by a black female artist ever to air on MTV. Summer wrote the anthem about working women after a real life moment. I was at the Grammys uh, party and I went to the ladies' room, and on my way in, I saw this little lady sitting at the end of the bar and she was asleep. She was a bathroom attendant. And my first thought was, God, she works hard for the money. Summer often credited the gay community for her success. But in the early 80s, as the AIDS crisis was exploding, the singer sparked controversy. It's reported that she said on stage, God made Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. Yeah. AIDS is a result of your sin. What really happened? She definitely said the Adam and Steve part. She's kind of said it as an off the cuff kind of a thing during her stage performance. There was misunderstanding about exactly what happened, number one, but also the fact that they didn't address it head on immediately. As a gay man, a uh, black gay man, grew up in the church, I 
understood that sort of push and pull and conflict that, that Donna went through, I was really offended by those comments. And I think when you watch the film and you understand, you know, who she is and where she came from and the complexities of that, you understand why she would make that comment and then her deep regret. Offstage, Summer struggled to balance her life as a performer and parent. Your mom has said that she never really felt maternal. I'm curious how she was as a mother. It's funny that she said that because she was very maternal. Mm. She was very nurturing and very warm to me and my sisters. My children are my two, and my husband and, and my family. I love to, to perform, you know, and that's extremely important, but it doesn't bring me what they bring me. What do you think her legacy is? She was a trailblazer. She really was uh, somebody who always was looking forward, whether that was music or in life. And, you know, I think that her music is still timely today because of that. And joining us now from L.A. is her daughter, Brooklyn Sudano, co-director of the documentary, along with Oscar-winning director Roger Ross Williams. Hi, Brooklyn. Good to see Good you. Good morning. Good so, to see you too. Tell us, tell us more about why you decided to make this documentary. What did you feel people were missing about your mom's story? Well, I, I think it was a, a few things. I had become a mother and didn't have my mom. And so there was a lot of just searching and trying to understand that, that dynamic. But then I also had so many fans and people come up to me and, and share their stories. And I realized just how much of a personal impact people had with her music or an experience with her. And so, you know, I just felt like they only knew part of her, though. And I just felt there were so many complexities and layers that people didn't really understand about her. And I, and I wanted to break that persona a little bit and allow people to really understand and see her for all that she was. And Brooklyn, uh, it was obviously very important for you to tell the story through family rather than through music historians. Yes. Yes, I think it was important because, you know, if I'm going to be a part of it and, and we're going to use our family footage, which we thought was so impactful, because that's where you really see somebody's personality. That's where you really get to understand uh, just somebody in their unguarded moments. And I and, and Roger and I both felt like that would be the most impactful. You know, music historians can talk and, and uh, elaborate and do all of that kind of thing for years to come. But this was something that we felt was really important for us to do. Brooklyn, what was it like growing up with a music icon as your mom? <laughs> she was mom, you know? <laughs> I mean, I always say, it's just like, have you, do you have a mom? It's basically like that, except we got to go on stage and travel and do a couple of extra fun things. No, I mean, listen, she was an extremely creative person. My sisters and I grew up in an environment where creation and painting and singing and performing was just part of the natural process of things. So uh, I do think that might be a, a little bit different than maybe somebody who's, you know, mom is a teacher. Um, but, you know, she was a loving, complex, interesting person and mother, you know, all the way around. So I, I, I wouldn't trade it. You know, we're so happy to have you joining us from L.A. Uh, through technology. But if you would, just take us back to Boston and how her early years in the city influenced her life and her career. Yes. Boston was extremely instrumental. I was actually just there about a month ago and saw her childhood home that they now have re, uh, renamed Donna Summer Ave on uh, the street that she grew up on, which is pretty amazing. But Boston was extremely instrumental. She, you know, my family still lives there, a lot of them. And I think it was just, you know, understanding uh, the dynamics of the, her spiritual and faithful life, uh, the Grant AMH Church, AME Church was really impactful. Uh, it's where she first really understood the power of her voice. And I think, you know, uh, some of those early clubs, she, club dates that she went and kind of snuck out of the house and saw Janis Joplin perform. And, you know, just all, all of those, there, there's so many key memories and elements uh, that Boston serves into who she really became and was really the foundation of, of her personality. And Brooklyn, 
Brooklyn, we do claim your mother as our own here in Boston, uh, Parker Hill right, Avenue. Rightfully so, rightfully yes. so. <laughs> we claim her, Parker Hill Avenue, now named Donna yep. Summer uh, Avenue. Brooklyn Sedano, thank you so much for sharing uh, your mom's work and your memories of Donna Summer. And the documentary Love to Love You, Donna Summer, is now on HBO and streaming on Max. And you can celebrate the days of disco on Friday, June 16th at the annual Donna Summer Disco Party on Boston City Hall Plaza. This family-friendly roller skating night is free and open to the public. More details can be found on our website.